is it Samurai Trader here. Welcome to my studio. We're going to be presenting, or I'll be recording for you, a training session today on trading the Texas tea, what I also call the black gold oil, the oil futures contract. Now, in today's session, we're going to be specifically focusing on tick charts. I'm going to be giving you some tips and ideas on how to best profit from trading tick charts. We'll also look, as we did in the last session, how tick charts can also combine well with Renko. So we'll have a look at both. And so I really recommend that you uh, have a pen and paper handy because we will be going through some ideas that you'll be able to implement immediately and take away. So let's first of all get the risk disclaimer up. So there is a risk in trading. Of course, don't trade with the rent money. Uh, if things are tough for you right now, Put your live trading on the hold, make sure you follow me. Uh, very, very important that we approach trading the right way the first time. Here's something that's really underestimated traders, and that's what we call the psychological damage that is done to traders that blow their account once or twice. It's not spoken about a lot, but it's really true. It's when we become uh, more hesitant, more skeptical about the trading decisions that we made that, that we make. And so we need to really get that under control. Now, if you haven't already, a very quick advertisement. If you haven't already, uh, please visit my website on the link below to request my free training manual and also my ebook, The Truth About Day Trading. And everything that I show you here today uh, is available. Um, it's only $197 for my top 15 setups. I've got uh, indicators for TradeStation, NinjaTrader, NinjaTrader 7, 8, uh, a whole lot of other trading platforms. I may not have the indicators, but I give you the settings on the indicators that I use. So in nearly every case, you'll be able to replicate and model exactly what I do. And most importantly, I trade full time. I have uh, dozens of coaching members. I just finished doing a uh, twice a week. I run a live two hour coaching session. I just wrapped that up a little time ago. And when you become a member, I give you full email support. There's over 150 hours of training videos and new Q and A's all the time. And, uh, and of course you can also join my uh, coaching uh, monthly uh, coaching program, which is peanuts, cheapest chips to join. But uh, perhaps you'll get an idea if you haven't seen any of my other videos, just of the massive content that I deliver my members. So let's get underway. First of all, and I'm going to actually turn off so I can uh, focus on this. So I'll turn off the, uh, the camera. So there we go. Okay, so first of all, mindset is absolutely everything. What do the markets mean to you? Are the markets an ATM? Are they exciting and fun? Or, as with many people nowadays, someone could be terrified or ready to steal your cash. And this is very, very important, the mindset that we bring. And we now know psychologically there's two types of mindset. We've either got the fixed mindset, that's a person that has to be right, or perhaps that has found things very tough over a period of time, and so they've become very skeptical. Then we've got the open mindset, what we call the growth mindset, the person that's very open-minded and willing to learn. Now, it doesn't mean that you don't ask the hard questions, but you at least be open to the possibilities. Very important. And as they say, if you think you can, you're right, and if you think you can't, you're right. And that makes a massive difference in trading. Trading does not have to be heart surgery. Now, it's very important here that I, first of all, give you a very quick overview of how to make money in the markets. First of all, this is very, very important. You trade in the direction of the overall trend until you're consistently profitable. Now, I like to look at it this way. As traders, we're like surfers waiting for the perfect wave. The perfect wave is when the lower and a higher time frame all confirm the trade. In other words, we execute our trade on an entry chart and we're trading in the direction of anchor chart one and two. Now, very important. And this is what I call Curly's Law. Curly's Law, of course, is Jack Valance in that uh, great movie, City Slickers, where he turns around and he says there's just that one thing. Very, very important that you really break your trading down. Initially, 
two chart, oh sorry, I should say three charts may be confusing. You don't have to have three. You can start off with two and I'll show you this, but it's very important that you've got a lower time frame that we execute our trades on in the direction of our anchor chart one. And you'll learn more about that as we, we proceed. Now, this is a fantastic book that came out a number of years ago, trend following how great traders make millions in up or down markets. Then we've got uh, this other excellent uh, book by Robert Miner, High Probability Trading Strategies. Now, in that book, he specifically talks about trading in the direction of the higher time frame. Now, very quickly, I'm just going to quickly go back to this. And many of you have uh, attended many of my seminars or, or webinars, and, and you know I'm a researcher. All of this and all of that, well, you can't see that over there, all of those are research reports, hundreds of trades, thousands of them, and uh, research reports on the market. I have a massive library. And the reason I bring that up, traders, I've done the hard work for you. If it was an easier way, I'll tell you. Or should I say, if it was an easier way and a better way, I would tell you. And I think this is very, very important that you're aware of that. This is what I do full time. So, because what I'm showing you is so logical and some people say, wow, it's so simple at the same time. What we're looking at doing is taking high probability trade entries in the direction of a higher time frame. Okay, now certainly we will do counter trend trades, but not initially. If trading has not been good to you up till now, if you haven't been profitable, or if you're a brand new trader, you don't wanna to have to go and learn 15 strategies. You just wanna start with one or two. You start with trend following strategies that are easy to learn, high probability. This is just so important. Now, we have a saying in, or with my members and in my coaching room, we call it five by five, yes I can, five by five, yes I can. You may notice automatically I start clapping my hands here, I'm fisting my hand here, or trading three by eight, yes I can, three by eight, yes I can. We're getting in what we call state. A huge part, 90% of trading, it's not about the strategies. There are literally hundreds of strategies that actually work. It comes down to the head stuff. We, you know, most traders or would be traders suffer from what I call the hardening of the attitudes and they need a regular checkup from the neck up. We spend hours with our members just on the head stuff because that's the important thing. Teaching them high probability uh, trade entries is the easy part. Okay, so very, very important we work on that. Now, with that, and oops, and I didn't really finish with that. This is what our target is is to have five scalps or four scalps a day worth around $50 each. And there are certain setups and I will show you on the tick chart. So stay with me. We're gonna be looking at those. Some of that will deliver that are good for scalping. And depending on the time frame, of course, if you're trading on a longer term, you'll go for a larger target. And then we've got a great setup, very high probability, 80% plus called the 2B. And if you're trading CL, which is what we're focused on today, That'll give you at least three eight tick trades a day, romps it in, okay? Now, what does that mean? That's over 400 a day. Now, it's very important traders that you have a target. You know, show me a man or a woman with a compelling future and I'll show you someone that's going to achieve it. It's just so important. Unfortunately, as time goes on, it's very easy to become skeptical and we live in a society of let's blame the other person. Unfortunately, one of the major reasons why traders fail today, and there's gonna be traders that watch this now and will want to blame. They will blame me or they'll blame others, but the bottom line is they're not willing to follow the rules. There are precise times when you need to enter. And yes, they are rules-based, but you've gotta follow the rules. And this is something we've got um, uh, with my coaching uh, members in our coaching room. and <laughs> We call it, let's scalp the crap out of it. Okay, so just on a uh, trend trade only, I'm banned from CT trading. That's what I sort of teach new traders or traders that have been finding it difficult because when I look at experienced traders that uh, perhaps haven't been making money or are not making money, it's a counter trend trading that usually gets them. 
And this is just the number of our trades down the bottom here. There's the ATR, just some of the rules. But then we've got down here, yes, I can, yes, I will. Yes, I can, yes, I will. And it's just this mantra because we get in state. It's what we call a neuro-linguistic program, programming strategy. Here's what the fact is, traders. If two people can do something, if two traders are profitable, you can what we call model them. Look at the syntax, the order in which they do things, and we can model that. That's the premise of NLP. Now, with trading, we can do exactly the same thing. Now, all of a sudden, when traders have a, a fantastic future ahead of them, such as earning, so if you started, let me just explain this and we'll come, come back to the, what I was about to say. If your average is 200 a day, just 200 a day, which is five scalps a day, and you've got 5,000 in your account. Now, if you don't have $5,000, it's fine because you can start with the micros now, uh, the minis, uh, the ES micro, and that's uh, about $600 is all you need. Or you can start, if you trade Forex with the micro Forex contracts, uh, you know, and once again, as I mentioned, the strategies and ideas I'm about to show you, it doesn't matter whether it's stocks, Forex or futures works equally as well. But here's what the fact is, 200 a day, it's a thousand a week. Within five weeks, you've doubled your money, you're now trading two. Within how many weeks is that? Eight weeks, you're now up to three. Within 16 weeks on just earning 200 a day net, as an average, a thousand a week per contract at the end of a week, you're earning over ten thousand dollars a week. Now, be open-minded to the possibility. You know, once again, if 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 you've got a big enough reason, you'll find a way of getting there. And just remember, anyone that's looking at joining me or any current members, how do we do that? And you know that 34 Bs and 2 Bs every day of the week. That's what we trade but create that compelling future. What is your income goal? Maybe 2,000, 5,000, 10,000. Your goal may be only $100. Now, when you become a member, we've got this um, on Excel spreadsheet. If you put $100 in there, it'll take you 38 weeks. In other words, if you earn just 100 a day as an average, within 38 weeks, you're up to $10,000 uh, per week if you average the, the 100 a day. There's virtually no business like it but you need to learn how to trade correctly. So before we go to the charts, I wanna go through a couple of fundamentals with you. Just like John Wooden, the great famous NCL uh, um, coach, basketball coach, uh, used to say, you've gotta practice the fundamentals every day. What are our fundamentals as master day traders? Well, for you to join the 5% club, that is to be in front of everyone else, we need to practice what we call our hour of power. That is getting our head right, going through our trading rules, checking red flags. We're, what we're actually doing here, traders, we're preparing for the day. You review your marked up charts. When you become a member, you receive dozens and hundreds of them, literally. You read your affirmations, you do your self NLP, all of this is covered, but you review your trading plan, you review your trading rules, what else? Now, even if you don't join me, these are the things that you must be doing. No doubt there's gonna be some very experienced traders watching this. You need to be doing this. For an example, today, what do we have with red flag? Uh, on this particular day, we had, at, uh, it's Wednesday, so we had the, uh, uh, the inventory report on oil, and of course, we'll see in a moment that the market went absolutely crazy. Then at 2 p.m., we had the FOMC announcement. Now, even oil dropped on the announcement. This is essential why we must look at red flag news and know what's happening with that. So these are things that we do each and every day. So for an example, in my coaching room, we were looking at what red flags do we have tomorrow? <clears throat> Excuse me. So I look at uh, forexfactory.com um, uh, and Econoday. They have the two ones. So forexfactory.com and econoday.com. Now, the reason I look at both is that um, gold, for an example, I love gold, uh, will also be affected by currency movements and things that are happening in, around the world. So it's very important you know what red flags are. 
Uh, for an example, the one at 10 a.m. tomorrow is going to be a big one, the ISM manufacturing report. So these are very important things, but unfortunately, so many traders do not do this. We also look at the daily volumes. Okay, now why do we want to know what's happening on the volumes? Well, the volume on the day and the speed of the market is going to affect the time frame that you're using on either your tick chart or your volume or even your time-based chart, uh, or of course, your Renko chart. The faster the movement of the market, generally the higher the time frame you want to be trading, otherwise it's a lot easier to be what we call whipsawed out of the market. Also, for an example with oil, which we're looking at today, you may notice here I've got the current contract and the forward contract. So today, with the inventory report, there was around 600,000 contracts traded and 123,000 on the forward contract. Now, why is that important that we know that? Well, it rolls over on the 18th of every month, give or take a day either way. And so we want to know uh, what volumes we've got. Also gives us a heads up on what's happening in that arena. Now, with the tick base charts, which is what we're about to look at, and uh, a couple of ideas and give you some great trading ideas. In fact, a tick, a tick chart counts down the number of predetermined transactions before forming a new candle. Now, with oil, during the New York session, I like a standard tick chart. My trading chart is a 233. During the Globex session, that is the after hours market, which we're in as I'm recording this right now, I like an 89 tick. Now, for my main anchor chart on the 233, so if, I, if we'll see this in a moment, I'll have a 233 and a 610. With my 89, I'll have a 233 as my anchor. Now, you may notice they're all Fibonacci numbers. Now, do you have to use Fib numbers? No, you don't. You can use round numbers. You might say, okay, I'll use a 200 or 250. Okay, but you just want to multiply, multiply those by three. Okay, very important you multiply those by three. And there's been a lot of, and personally speak, I was about to say, there's been a lot of studies and look, I don't think there's any difference between a, a tick chart personally. Now, don't attack me, just my opinion. But why do I use tick charts Sam? Because I've got 5,000 members, so that's that's why. Many of them uh, use tick charts. So I'm sort of, I've become a convict, a convict convict, uh, convert um, uh, by association. So let's now have a look at the charts. Now, first of all, when we look at the charts, um, very, very important traders, you minimize the indicators that you really need. Okay, so what do you really need? What are you going to use? Unfortunately, a lot of charts look like this where they've got so many different indicators there, okay? Now, literally, I know this is a slight exaggeration, but this is almost what a lot of traders do. And the reason I've got this up is when I'm training uh, new members in my coaching program, I actually go through all the different indicators. They can use all of these work, by the way. Uh, there are literally hundreds of, of indicators and adaptions of indicators that do work. Uh, if we consider this for an example, just go uh, here, my particular case uh, where I've been coding, having coded, I've got literally hundreds of indicators. And this is why I say to my members, if it was something better that I knew about, I'll tell you about it, okay? Or I'd give it to you. Um, I don't personally sell, I don't sell my indicators, I give them away. And I've got hundreds of them, all right? Now these are trade station, but many of them of course are applicable. And some of the most common indicators are the best. For an example, your MACD the percent R, then an RSI used correctly is fantastic, a stochastic is fantastic um, uh, used correctly. There's just so many different indicators that you can use. So the reason I bring that up is that my chart's not gonna suit everyone. And it's very important that you generally understand, I'm not gonna go through all the indicators, but you understand the usefulness and well, what they do on the chart. But what I do wanna get across to you right here, traders, is, and uh, oops, I just jumped ahead a little bit. That's not what I wanted to do. because I want to go through so, uh, candle by candle for you to show you what I'm looking for, okay? Now, first of all, 
between there and there, that was the uh, today's inventory report. Now, it doesn't look like a big market mover, but it does. It takes off like a bull out of a gate usually. So you've got to be really uh, cautious of, of that. Now, I'm just showing one of the anchor charts here. I like to have two. And there's a reason for that uh, with some of the setups that we use, very high accurate, high probability. But let's start to go through what I'm looking at. Now, I do have to say this at the same time. I love Renko charts. And you can actually trade, if you haven't looked at Renko, really, I really recommend you do. Now, this for an example is there, is that point right there. That point there is that point right there. This one here is that point there. Renko is a fantastic chart for smoothing out price action, but sometimes it can smooth it out a little too much. That's why we uh, learn to trade and to look at both tick and Renko. They can work hand in hand. Now, for the brand new trader, you don't have to start with both combined. You start with one thing, Curly's Law. You start with one setup, one chart, one time frame, and one market. As you get that down pat, you then start to add to that. So let's go back to our tick chart and what we're looking for. Uh, wrong one. That's Here we go. <clears throat> Pardon me. So let's just scroll along here. What I've got on my chart here, as you can see here, I've got EMAs. Now, EMAs basically will give us an overview of the trend direction. And we've got a saying, uh, follow the gold. So see the yellow, we follow the gold. Now, we can see with tick charts here, and this is one thing where it varies from, say, trading using Renko. With tick, I really like using an oscillator and a short-term hook to confirm a move. Now, typically on a 233 tick chart, you're going to have a seven tick stop, which on oil is $70, so it's $10 a tick, and you're after eight ticks. So you can see there, we romped our eight ticks, we romped our eight ticks in there. Now, that there were two potential entries, and we then had an entry. Now, these white candles are based upon the, the uh, three candles here, and it's a pattern. I call it the super scalper. You don't have to use the super scalper. You can actually uh, uh, just simply use candle formation and a close below the blue trigger line. So see there, there is a entry right there. Our next entry is right there and our stop goes one tick above. Our entry goes right here and my stop goes one tick above. With tick charts, however, sometimes you'll find you only need a five tick stop. I still recommend that you still use a seven tick stop. The reason being, you can quite often get what we call whipsawed. Okay, so the market can be quite choppy. Now, one of our highest probability, probability trades is right there when the market starts to roll. Very, very high probability. And it's what we call a T20-1. And so there's our T20. You can enter on that one. But then we've got this one here. Very, very high probability. Let's continue. Now, the point of using an anchor chart is this. Now, forget that you can see all of this here. Just focus on this bit here, okay? Number one, do I have a trending market? Well, we look at our EMAs here, they're rolling over, and we look at our EMAs here, and we're waiting for a pullback, a retracement. And this particular one is what we call a 2B. Remember, traders, and let's just quickly go back to that PowerPoint for a moment. And let me just scroll, whoops, let me get this right for you. Uh, let's just go back up to this. Where is it? Remember here I said, we're after three eight tick trades a day and we've hit our 225. And what was the end result of that? Our end result is we're romping this in. So what's going to best do, what's our best way of getting there? Well, it's to do two things. Trade with the trend number two. You're always waiting for retracement and you're waiting for on 
tick charts. This is very important traders. You want to have a hook. No hook, no trade, okay? Now you can trade pure price action only. That is just waiting for, say, three lower closes. So I know there's some diehard pure price action traders out there. And yes, I know you can do very well and you don't have to have the oscillator, but for new traders or as an added confirmation tool, this is where short-term stochastic hooks can be really good. So we travel down. Now, as long as we see our higher time frame, we're waiting for a retracement on our entry chart and a trend continuation. This is also very important. See these little black dots here? They're called fractals. Now, Bill Williams, uh, who wrote the book Profitunity and Trading Chaos has made fractals really quite famous. And in principle, you're taking the low of those and you're drawing a horizontal line and you're selling the break of that line. Okay, so there's one there, there's another one here. Okay, so these are called effective, are really breakouts. We're trading what we call, and, and it works brilliantly, but we're trading what we call trend continuation. So we're in up here, we're in up here, we're in there, we get in earlier. Uh, and once again, as I said, there's lots of strategies that work. And so we've got a trade right there. So we're in on this trade right here. So we're taking all of these retracements provided the prevailing trend confirms the move. Now, what you can also use, you can see the little red dots there. They're what I call an ATR. If we look at the Renko chart, my ATR, it's a lot easier to read and say when it's on a tick chart because of the tails, okay? You get a lot more jagged uh, the way they form, the number of transactions in that price range will vary. Hence, you'll have different size candles. So your ATR can work very well, but you can also use a parabolic SAR, which stands for stop and reverse. And you just need to fine tune it because if you'll say day trading, you're at work, you don't have a chance, sorry, not uh, swing trading, my apologies, and you're at work, you don't have a chance to look at the charts. You wanna have a really wide stop. But as day traders, we're in and out, we're in and out. So we're scalping the crap out of it, okay? So we wanna get in, pick up our five to eight ticks, pick up our five to eight ticks. Now, what if you wanna go for your larger targets? This is where your ATR or parabolic or even a moving average on a high time frame, and as long as you're staying under that in a short situation, you're staying with the trade. Traders, trading does not have to be rocket science. It really doesn't. Um, I own just about every indicator maybe a slight ex exaggeration, but I've, I've purchased dozens and some of them have cost thousands of dollars. Now, I'm what I call a strategy hacker. Now you may be thinking, Ray, I was with you up till now, but what the hell is a strategy hacker? I look at a strategy and I reverse engineer it. How does it work? Um, uh, or does it work? And virtually every strategy I've ever looked at or indicator is a derivative of price or it's a remodel of someone else's indicator. That's the fact. Now, your best indicators are free. They truly are. They're free. Your RSIs, your stochastics. Now, all of these are derivatives of price, which means they plot after the fact. But then if you go and learn how to trade your floor pivots, which is what these lines are, these are a predictive indicator because the chances of hitting a floor pivot, and let me just expand this, are extremely high. Okay, so if you've entered a trade here and you know that, and this is what we call the, uh, the R1. And so if we're going from the R1 back down to the floor pivot, it's a 92% chance you will eventually, this is on the R1 and S1 only, you'll come down and you'll kiss the pivot. Now you may stair step, and this is what we call stair stepping on the way down. But this is where as day traders, we'll scalp the crap out of it, we'll come down and get it. Now here is another 2B, here is another 2B. Now the 2Bs are the ones where we go for a larger profit target. 
and your 34 Bs, your slingshots, etc., will go for it. Will go for a scalp, but you can uh, uh, trail. So trailing, you can use an ATR here. You've got the ATR. It's kept you in all the way down. Uh, or you can use the parabolic, or as I mentioned, a higher um, time frame moving average. Now, another thing here you want to look at is note 5850, 5820. Note how these act as support and resistance on oil. So round numbers are very powerful here, 5880. Look how price went up there and bounced off it. These can also assist you with your trading. So what we've done, traders, is quickly reviewed the potential. There's a huge potential with, uh, with trading uh, tick charts. Tick charts are a great methodology. Likewise, so are Renko. Okay, so here's a Renko chart right here. Okay, so Renko's nice and smooth. But what I like to do, as I mentioned in a, my last video on trading CL with Renko charts, uh, you can use them as a combination. Because if you get a really strong trend on a Renko, it'll be all red and you think, gee, how can I get back in? But you look over at the tick and you've got other entry points. So where do we go from here? So traders, I've covered a fair amount of information the past uh, 30 minutes. The bottom line is you can do very, very well uh, trading the black gold. $10 a tick, it trades basically 23 hours a day. Uh, it slows right down after uh, when the market reopens at 6 p.m. Eastern, it slows right down. And that's why you need to consider at all times uh, the, the chart um, size that you're using. Well, what we mean by that, the tick size. So New York, we're looking at uh, uh, 233 typically uh, for a normal day. Uh, if it, the market goes crazy and it really picks up, you might have to increase the time frame. Uh, if once you get to roll over into the Globex session, which is the Asian session at 6 p.m. Eastern, we'll drop it way down to an 89, sometimes even a 55 tick chart, okay, because it's that much slower. But once you hit the London session, so there's really three sessions in the market. You've got New York, which has got the highest volume. You roll over into the Asian, which is the lowest. Then you go into London just before New York opens, and that's when it really starts to pick up. You try not to use too many different time frames because it can become uh, a little confusing. And there's also little hacks you can use, such as just uh, show you on this one. Uh, whereas let's go back to that tick chart. You may notice here this very thin line I've got there. See that little black line? That is a higher time frame EMA that I use, and it models exactly the 200 EMA on my anchor chart. So if I wanted to have this all the way up and I want to see what's happening on the higher time frame, the longer term EMA tells me that. So I can see the trend direction. Why? Because I want to be trading in the direction of the trend until we roll over. So we will wrap things up, traders. So please subscribe to my channel to keep up to date with all of my videos. Better still, become a member. It's only $197, full email support. I run uh, fortnightly uh, training videos that I record. Uh, it's, as you can find any information about my coaching program on my site, but we've got a, a coaching program. I run two live sessions a week. So traders, thank you very much. Uh, and, uh, look, and make sure you look out for my next video. Thank you.